Exodus 17 that Moses had confronted the Amalekites. And that when Moses' arms was raised up, they were winning the war. They won the battle. But when he grew weary and his arms came down, they lost the battle. And we know that Ur and Aaron would help raise his arms up to keep them winning the battle. Now what in the world could that mean? Why would God do something like that? Does that make sense? It does make sense in the spiritual. Because this is the position of what? Surrender. Surrender. When the police said, put your hands up, what they tell you to do? Put your hands up. Surrender. You better put your hands up. <laughs> surrender. I surrender. And they were fighting who? The Amalekites. And afterwards, God told them that they would have war with the Amalekites forever. They would have conflict with the Amalekites forever with Amalek. Amalek was type and symbol of the flesh. We all have. The selfish flesh inside so when Saul was told to take them out, spiritually, it's talking about, Saul, I told you to surrender so your flesh can be destroyed. And he said, okay, I'm going to let it all be destroyed, but one part. And that one part is going to be not Ahag, but Agag. <laughs> and he was the king, wasn't he? Yep. What does that mean? That means a lot of us allow the Lord to destroy much of our flesh. But the flesh that's ruling in here, <laughs> that's over the governor of our mind, the spirit of our mind, sometimes that big one, we won't turn loose of it. Mm -hmm. Just like Saul. You ever heard that before? Because he just told me a while ago, about an hour ago. <laughs> it's good, though. It really makes sense. Once you start looking at it, you go, wow, that's why he had Moses do this. Some of us are not surrendering some of our flesh to the Lord. And what happens if we don't surrender that old spiritual flesh, that selfishness inside, that self-spirit, the beast inside, we don't surrender and let the Holy Spirit put us to death, we will rebel and we'll be stubborn against the word of the Lord. Because that's exactly what happened in 1 Samuel 15. Flip over it real fast before we go into it. 15, yeah. Here it is. I already went over most of this. He was told to do a thing. The word of the Lord came by the prophet. Where does the word of the Lord come now? Is, is it the prophet, the preacher, the apostle? No, we're just here to teach. This is the word of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit takes this word and he gives it, don't he? Why? Because the, the spirit of prophecy is in Jesus Christ. Hello. He is the what? The word. Don't let no man co contradict this word and tell you the Lord told, the Lord told me to tell you. you know I mean? <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. If we will not obey, obey God's word, then we're becoming rebellious and stubborn, and it says the sin of witchcraft. That's where I'm coming across here because Saul did not obey. He brought the king back. He, let, he left a little bit of the flesh in there. He got rid of most of it, but then he's going to say he obeyed. Just like sometimes we do. Lord, I feel that sermon popping me, but I have obeyed your word. I have done this, and we know good and well that there's things that we haven't taken to it. The altar call was open, and we sat there and said, well, I'll work this out. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> Hello? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I've been there. I've done this thing. I know exactly what I'm talking about here. This is the type of symbol of what this means, and this is why he wound up going to a spirit of divination and listening to it instead of listening to the Holy Spirit and grieving the Holy Spirit to the point where the Holy Spirit went draw and let him let him go on. He's a gentleman. How many of you know that he will if he's grieved and quenched and we won't let that thing go at the altar and we won't give that thing to the Lord Jesus? Guess what happens? He will withdraw and allow you to go on into that thing. That's what he did. This man was anointed king. The first king of Israel. Did you know through Jesus Christ we are co-heirs with Christ? We are made kings, it says in Revelation. We are made high. We are made priests. It says in uh, 1 Peter 2, 8 and 9. A peculiar people, a royal priesthood. But will we let Amalek be destroyed? Will we let the works of the flesh in our life be taken out? Amen? Here, here it goes. It says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, verse 10. 1 Samuel 15, verse 10. It repents me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me. So that one time, Saul followed the Lord. He wasn't always reprobate. 
Remember I told you a while ago, I didn't even know why I was telling you that testimony about being saved at first? And how you feel, oh, praise God, you feel like you're floating and He's carrying you. You feel the love of God and all of a sudden you go into something. Before you know it, you then got into religious rebellion. Well, how did I get here? Satan is very good at that. He's very good at deceiving us. All we got to do is turn back around and say, Lord Jesus, take me back to where I was at first. Help me to remember my first love. Amen. You know what he told the church? Revelation? Yeah. <laughs> it's that easy. But the enemy says, don't do it. Because all Saul had to do was repent. But religious pride says, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong in this. I've done what God's told me to do. But had he done what God had told him to do when he brought the king with him? That's what Samuel's trying to point out. That's what sermons point out. Have you noticed that? It makes many people mad. Just like Saul, they be stubborn, rebellious, stiff-necked, and they fool around, and they'll go to horoscopes rather than to go into Jesus. They'll sit in church on Sunday, they'll get mad at the preacher for preaching the Word, and they'll say, oh, forget him. I'm going to go find out what dear, what Abby says or something. I'm going to go look up a horoscope and see what it says. I'm going to go by somebody else. I want a spirit to tell me. That's what we left off last week. That he had done gone to the spirit of divination. What I'm showing you now is why. And how it affects us too. And sometimes if we rise up in rebellion, we end up going to the same route and not even realizing it, that we're going down that road of rebellion. But we're still religious. He was still religious. He was still offering sacrifice. Matter of fact, he got so zealous about offering sacrifice that he, the first one he lit up, he didn't wait on uh, Samuel. That's right. Remember? He said, oh man, we got to do this thing. And he was out of order. He was out of religious order. Anyway. He said, he turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Now that's a real man of God. Because instead of him being happy about going to rebuke somebody, he was grieved. It hurt him. It pained him. It made him, it made him grieved inside. Why? Because the Holy Spirit that was upon him was grieved. You grieve because you really love someone. You actually love them so much that it grieves your heart. You don't enjoy going to give a rebuke or reproval or anything like that. You are grieving for the person. He's grieving because he knows the Lord's not playing here. God's a serious God. Amen. And he expects us to follow his word, his precepts, his prescribed order, our faith in Christ, <laughs> and none other. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel. And behold, he set him up a place and is gone out of bounds and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. Gilgal, excuse me. And the Samuel and Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. So he's already pulling up some religious talk. Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed. Now Samuel hadn't said nothing. I hadn't said nothing yet. And all of a sudden, he's all, already saying, I've done what God's told me to do. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. 